we as participants have got to be incredibly robust about the security of data and transparent about how we're using it. I mean, I think anyone who's responsible, which would include ourselves, is saying, well, look, we are, first of all, it's incredibly secure, it's anonymized, but we are using it to give you, the consumer, information that we think you'll find either interesting and or useful to optimize stuff. The law always lags behind technology. It's yeah. just a fact of life. So, um, you know, I think regulation is, is almost certainly by definition behind the Internet of Things as well as other technologies. Um, it's just the way it is and I, I probably there will be you know, new regulations, new laws that will address gaps that people identify um, as well as the fact that there's, I think it's rather helpful with the Internet's progress in general that it's been left to its own devices quite a lot in order to actually let a thousand flowers bloom and see what works and what doesn't. I think over-regulating things too early is, is a way to kill the creativity. We know that um, with traditional heating controls, people have found them quite complicated to use. And as a result of that, a lot of consumers don't use them as effectively as they could do and in effect are wasting energy and money. One of the things that we can do using, for example, high active heating is help consumers by nudging them to use it more effectively. So for example, setting a schedule as to what temperature your home should be at different times of day is an efficient thing to do because most people are not home all day. Um, we can observe which consumers are not doing that and prompt those people who've got the product to say, well, look, you're, you're, you, know, you might be not using a schedule because you just don't want to. Fine, it's your choice. We're not, you know, we're, we're not going to control that. But if you did use a schedule, you might find it a way to be just as comfortable but use less energy. Here's how to do it. So I think there's sort of ways that one can use that data in a very responsible kind of way. The real potential for the Internet of Things is the data, is the fact that all of these interactions, regardless of whether they're consumer facing or they're back end logistics and sort of tracking based, they're all generating a huge amount of data about the minutiae of those physical objects being interacted with or being um, uh, tracked at various points of their life cycle, literally from perhaps how they're made and the materials they use to the point that they actually get recycled into a next generation of products. And all of that data, how you manage that, what you do with that, from a marketing point of view, the intelligence and insight you extract from it and how you reapply that intelligently to stimulate repeat purchase and loyalty, how you use it for R&D, for reduced costs, for more efficient you know, supply chain production and logistics. That is actually the fundamental challenge. So the Internet of Things is at heart about, it's, in that sense, it's a big data problem. But you can only do that if you make an easy, compelling way for consumers to interact with objects that they get value from.